What is going on guys? Awesome Nerd Joe here. And so we just got done seeing the new Aquaman movie. Of course here on the release date stuff. So um, we're going to do a review of it as usual like we do. But we're not going to be doing the spoiler free section. So this will have spoilers going into it. So if you haven't seen it don't want anything spoiled for you. Go ahead and shut the video off right now. But we are going to be talking about spoilers and everything. So let's get into it. Um, so first of course the big question is. Is this movie good? Is this a re I don't know how I say redo, I don't know, whatever, of the DC Universe. Like, is it back on track of where it needs to be? I would say probably yes would be the most affirmative thing. Um, is it a good movie? Uh, pretty good. I mean, to, I would say it's not the best movie in the world, but it's definitely better than a lot of the uh, DC movies have been. I, For me personally, I would say it's under Wonder Woman, but I still really enjoyed Wonder Woman, and I still enjoyed this movie. And um, just as talking with Brown stuff that he'll give his opinion here in a second, that I compared it to the first movie of the Marvel movies. So like the first Iron Man movie, Thor movie, Captain America, whatever you super you want to pick, they're like first movies is what that is, where it's still a good movie, but just not the most exciting and interesting thing. It had a lot of cool stuff in that we'll talk about, but it's just not the, um, like I said, the best movie ever. So bro, what was your opinion? I really like the movie. I thought it was probably the best that DC has done so far. Um, my big problem with origin movies is it always takes so long to get in the action, yeah. and this one started with the action. Yeah, um, and so it started with the action pretty early, you know, um, pretty much as soon as, uh, like, soon as, uh, what, Atlanta, or what, what was the mother's name? Atlanta. Atlanta, whatever. Um, as, like, almost a, you know, s few minutes after she, you know, appeared to Aquaman's dad's, like, uh, White House. House and stuff, like, all, like, they're just sitting there, and all of a sudden, action starts happening with some of the Atlanteans coming to try and get her back and, like, arrest her, or whatever. So, like, the action starts pretty early in, and then there's breaks, and then action, like, every so often. So, it pretty much keeps up the action um, pretty, like, evenly throughout the movie. Um, doesn't let you sit down for too long and stuff. I felt some of the parts where there wasn't action was kind of boring. Um, not that it was, like, you know, overly boring, like, oh my god, get through this, but it just was wasn't exciting enough and I felt like I was wanting to fall asleep or something. So we'll go ahead and just start with, so of course with the beginning of the movie you got to get the origins and so we've already been introduced to Aquaman so I guess the origin story wasn't, you know, I mean it is, but say it wasn't really to introduce Aquaman right away since we've already seen him, you know, in the Justice League movie and stuff. We've already know who uh, Arthur Curry or Aquaman is like himself, but we get introduced to his parents so we get to see his dad, you know, at the lighthouse and his mom gets washed up to shore during a storm as she's trying to escape um, from the Atlanteans because she's trying to escape her, I guess, arranged marriage to um, the king of Atlantis, maybe? I don't really know. The whole backstory kind of confusing to me. Uh, but then, he, so he ends up finding her and then takes care of her and they end up falling in love, which it was really cool for me, at least, to see that um, Aquaman's dad was played by Tamora Morrison, which played Jango Fett and then all the clones and stuff in Star Wars, so that was fun to see him back in a movie again because I've never really seen him in anything else besides Star Wars. Um, so we get the introduction of them and then um, it flash forwards a little bit and you get the introduction of Arthur, the baby, um, like right after he was born and stuff and they name him Arthur even though he's been born it looked like for a little bit. You usually you name kids, you know, first day and everything, but that was just a little weird. Um, and then it flash forwards a little bit more and he's like a toddler now and then that's when the uh, Atlanteans come in to try and arrest the mom and stuff and she ends up fighting back but just decides to go back to Atlantis because she's like if I don't go they're just gonna keep coming after me and stuff and it'll you ruin your life and everything so she just leaves and then that leads to a story where Aquaman gets raised alone by his dad um, but of course we did get flashbacks that I wasn't expect like I expected because of the commercial or the trailers but wasn't expecting to really see in the movie which we'll um, talk about in a little bit and so then that brings us into the modern day where of course you see Aquaman hanging out with his dad and everything um, at like a they go to a bar or something and that was fun to see so with these movies so the chain one of the big changes obviously that they did from the DC movies because the DC movies are so dark and everything that's what everyone talks about they put a lot of comedy into this and so like there you get some of the first comedy at that bar where you see these big old biker guys this whole gang like coming up to him after there's been a news story on the TV about 
um, you get it, you see Arthur uh, sa saving a submarine full of people from I don't know what they were. They it seemed like they didn't speak English or at least perfect English. It seemed like they were Russian, or some sort of Czechoslovakia, like, um, Eastern European or something like that. Um, and so he ends up saving them from what the I don't know what the group is called, but it's like we're Black Mana's group. Um, they were pirates. Like yeah, pirates and stuff. And so he saves them from that and then comes back. And so that's all over the news and stuff that this Aquaman figure saved these people. And so they come up to him in the bar like, are you the Aquaman or Aqua Boy or something along those lines? Fish like, Boy. Fish Boy, yeah. And so he's like, oh, God, I'm going to get in a fight and stuff. So he turns around and there a guy pulls out a camera. He's like, I just want to get a photo. And so then it starts showing this clips of photos of different snapshots and stuff where, you know, he starts off like brooding. Aquaman does like because he's taking a picture with these guys and then you could tell they've been drinking and now he's drunk and so he's doing all sorts of crazy pictures and stuff so that was the first introduction really into the comedy of the movie and it just you know carried throughout there was a lot of comedic spots throughout the movie some weren't as funny because they put them in the uh, trailer and stuff so they weren't like as funny obviously um, but the ones that weren't there were pretty decent like wasn't the best you know comedy ever but it was pretty decent so that was enjoyable but from there, we then get her introduced to uh, Mara again back. We saw her in Justice League, and so now she's back again, you know, telling Arthur, you need to go back because um, Orm, his half-brother, something like that, is uh, claiming, you know, the throne of Atlantis, and he's going to be trying to unite the Seven Kingdoms, the Underwater Kingdoms together, and then he can for become the Ocean Master and take over the land or whatever, take a war to land the land dwellers surface. Goes, yeah, surface people um and so she's like you need to come back <clears throat> with me and stuff and so they go off to atlantis and start the whole thing so there we get the introduction into atlantis of course you um i guess right before they arrive you do get to see um orm and the other atlantean like army soldier stuff and what was the guy's name the i can't remember no the um like a uh, helper guy. Oh, uh, Volko? Yeah, Volko, William Defoe, which was funny, to, at least for me, to see a movie where he's actually a good guy because I think every movie I've ever seen with him in it, he's always been a bad guy, so I was afraid he was going to turn at some point throughout the movie, but of course he stayed as a good guy and like the mentor and stuff between Aquaman, which I guess I'll go ahead and throw that in now. That's what I was talking about. You, throughout the movie, you get these little clips back of when he was training um, Arthur to like use his powers and stuff that he has, you know, for being whatever, the Aquaman people. I don't Atlanteans. know. Atlanteans. Atlanteans, yeah. And so he's teaching him how to use powers, which that's what I, like I said, you see those in the trailer, but I wasn't really expecting to see, you know, that he was being trained by that. I thought maybe, you know, like his dad knew, you know, combat or martial arts he was training him but since the mom left her uh trident right. that he was just using that the training and stuff to fight with and so that's what i was kind of expecting but then you see this guy you know came from atlantis and came up to the uh surface and actually taught him his powers and stuff so that was fun to see you saw him as a younger kid then as like a older teenager and stuff leading up again to where he is now and everything so i like that so you get to see him there and then they meet with a group of dog Dolph Lundgren Lades, I don't know what, do you know what they're called? The Zebellions. Yeah, something like that. Um, but they're just another group of underwater people, which that's what, um, and he's Mara's, or Mara's dad um, in the movie and stuff. And they're just meeting, go, uh, meeting together again, trying to unite the Seven Kingdoms. And that's like Orm's first uh, like connection or whatever to try and make. And then, of course, they're meeting and they get attacked by a submarine, um, which I... Felt like it was the submarine from it's earlier, the, but I thought yeah. it just got destroyed and blown <clears throat> it up. It was and the everything. one that Black Mana's group. Yeah, was. and at the beginning of that too, I keep forgetting the whole Black Mana stuff. Aquaman, of course, accident I would say accidentally killed a Black Mana's father, and so that's why it forces the guy that becomes Black Mana to go after him and everything. And so he like took control of the submarine, and he's work uh, working with Orm and stuff, and uh, brings in the submarine, and starts shooting missiles at him, and then. Um, they destroy Orm ends up destroying the submarine and stuff, and that like that whole thing allows um, again Dolph Lundgren's group to say he'll follow Orm and stuff, and that brings that whole connection together. But then of course you find out again that it was controlled by Black Man, and he's being paid or whatever by Orm to do this whole thing to be able to for like to force them into it and stuff. Um, but that's what I wanted to say. So. Um, so throughout this movie, the one of the parts I did not like is that, at least for me personally, they used a lot of jump scares. And, of course, I'm a person that, like, jumps a lot and stuff. And I feel they did not need to do that. So, like, every time there would be a quiet part, 
or there'd just be two people talking and all of a sudden an explosion would happen and then like the enemy and stuff would show up and it would like you know scare me every single time and so I just feel I hate movies that do that I hate jump scares and especially in a fun you know superhero movie I don't think they're necessary like in a horror movie yeah it makes more sense but it I feel it was completely unnecessary but they did it anyways a whole bunch of times I felt and I was like I did not need that at all but going back so now this brings Arthur into Atlanta or Atlantis, sorry, and he, um, you know, of course, is like, I'm he, or they do the whole connection thing or whatever, he gets captured, um, because he actually meets in a secret, uh, underwater abandoned ship, or whatever, he meets Volko, and with Mare and stuff, and they're teaching him, you know, you need to go find the trident and everything, his, uh, I, I guess, I don't know who the trident belonged to, he's like the original king of Atlantis, or whatever, um, which is the true trident that Aquaman has and everything. Um, he has to, he needs to go find that, and then because of that, he can you know claim that he's the king of Atlantis, and then challenge his brother and stuff, and be able to become the king and ruler of Atlantis and stop his brother's whole plan thing. But they end up getting captured and stuff, so Aquaman's captured, and so he challenges, um, or. Oshmas Orm or whatever challenge I can't remember who challenged you but anyways they challenge the fight and so they do a whole fight thing and uh, Aquaman's of course getting his butt kicked because he's not lived underwater very often so he doesn't have much control of the underwater uh, fighting and everything so he's getting his butt kicked and so Murrah comes in and saves him and then they escape out and stuff and then they end up going on the journey to find the trident where they find it in the middle of the Sahara Desert and we saw that clip. I don't know if it was in a tra I think it was the extended trailer that it was they the released. Five minute. Yeah, that they, they released a lot of scenes. You saw that in there. Of course, they jump out of the airplane stuff like from the trailer, and then they get the um, the uh, message from the again the original King of Atlantis, and he says where you can find the trident and stuff. And so they end up going to uh, Sicily where. Um, they have a thing, I guess, that leads them there or something. I forget how they get it. It was a system. map in a bottle that after the message yeah. played, it opened up in the floor. And that's right, because the map leads them there, and then the bottle is what they used to find out where they need to go. Um, but while they're in Sicily, they didn't get attacked by the new Black man because he was, um, of course, with the help of Orm and stuff, Orm gave him a bunch of Atlantis uh, like armor and stuff and so he took it modified it into the black mana costume like you see which looks very you know pretty close to like the original outfit and I think it looks really cool probably the best it could look for adaptation into a movie and so he shows up with um, some of the Atlantean warriors that the royal guard yeah. which is led by Merc which is yeah, okay. during the fight he got his arm cut off yeah. and out of all the characters in the movie Merc was the biggest disappointment to me because in the comics, Merc is like a big hulking He was just beast. normal looking guy. He'd be like Colossus in the X-Men, but in here he looked like Iceman out of the yeah. X-Men movies. Oh, so yeah, so it's the Royal Guard, which they have red armor, which kind of fits with like the whole Star Wars and stuff with the red armor for the Royal Guard. Um, but then they're fighting with uh, Mera and Aquaman and stuff. Of course, uh... Black Man is going after Aquaman and all the Royal Guards going after Mare and stuff. And so they end up fighting around and um, he's able to actually stab Aquaman now because he tried to at the beginning. But because of his Atlantean skin, I guess, the like blades can't pierce him. But since he's got the armor now and weapons from Atlantis itself, it can actually cut him. So he's actually slicing up uh, Aquaman and everything. Um, but he ends up uh, taking these ball things attached to a chain. They're just like um, on the ground. And he ends up like swinging around and it takes out Black mana and pulls him into the water and that's the last you see a black mana until the very end where we see him which we'll talk about in a little bit um so then they end up finding out where they need to go in the trench they take the boat uh, or boat go out to the trench where they start getting attacked by the trench warriors which that was another jump scare scene and i'm pretty sure a lady in the theater like screamed really loud when they appeared um but then they go down into the trench and stuff and find this uh weird portal or this weird look like a tornado underground or something like that of like lightning and stuff and they go into it get transported into this like jurassic part it was world. the center of the earth <clears throat> yeah center of the, the earth. lost so, ocean so kind of like the movie journey to the center of the stuff there you go into it it there's water there's big giant floating rocks and stuff there's dinosaurs and they have come getting saved by a lady which turns out to be aquaman's mom because she was banished and sent to the trench yes. i think and so they thought she got killed by the trench warriors and stuff but Turns out she got went through this portal and transported into the center of the earth. So it was kind of like Wasp in Ant-Man and Wasp. 
or the original one where she was in this realm and so she started making her own armor and stuff like that and it reminded me a lot of that um so she shows up and saves them and then uh that's where the uh, trident is and so he, aquaman has to go through this waterfall and stuff and he goes to gear up get the trident but has to like take on a kraken carafe Okay, so which, it sounded like Kraken, but a weird saying of it. Which is weird because in the Aquaman comics that, I want to say it was like four issues ago from the current comics, Aquaman uh, lost his throne at Atlantis to a, another Atlantean named Coram Wrath. Oh. So Karath is just yeah. Sea Wrath. Um, so yeah, it's pretty much all the, you see are big like tentacles coming up and they're trying to stop and they're beating him up and everything. But he ends up using his uh, like water communication power or fish, whatever, for she, he can tell, communicate or whatever with fish and stuff. He uses that and she's like, oh, you can understand me. And, and she's like, well, if you can get the trident from his hand, you're the king and stuff. And so he goes up, grabs the trident and takes it out. So he becomes the new king of Atlantis and has the or, true trident and everything. And he gets the new armor of the Which, that gold. was a weird scene because that was the same armor that the fallen king was wearing. Yeah, pretty similar. And it's yeah. like, did he take it off and put it on? Yeah. Or? Because the king, because he was just sitting there holding the staff, because he like turned the stone and stuff. But once he took it, the like king's body like turned to dust and stuff, and the armor just fell onto the ground. So I assume he probably just took it and put it on, but it's kind of weird. Um, but yeah, so he had the classic look or more classic version of the goldish orange top, and then the green pants, and then he had green gauntlets on and stuff. Which um, it's kind of weird to me. It looked like a corn cob. Like his outfit looked like a corn cob, just the way the um, like scale designs looks like corn, and then it had green on, so it looked like the husk of a corn and stuff. It just kind of looked silly to me. I think the gauntlets were supposed to be seaweed. like seaweed. Yeah, yeah. And he has it on his feet too, and so he's now the true Aquaman, the king of Atlantis, and all that sort of stuff. And so it transports back and goes back to I forget what the place was. The brine. Yeah, the brine was like the next kingdom that, um, cause they, or uh, no, we forgot about the yeah, Ocean fishmen. Master had yeah went to the fishmen, and tried to get the king to, or their leader or whatever to join them, and he refused, and so Orm ended up killing him, and so they just he, he been, intimidated the, the daughter, which was the princess, yeah, the princess, the, and so they the got fishmen. that army to join them as well, and so the next was the brine. And so, which are a bunch of like crab people and stuff. And so, you transport back to that, and they're um, fighting the war with um, Orm, which now um, has become Ocean Master, at least the classic looking Ocean Master. He's got the mask and helmet on and everything. And so, he's leading this giant army where they have fish and sharks and the, it's like sea horses and uh, technology. Yeah, like a Mosasaur and stuff. Technology, big like underwater ships and stuff that are weird looking all sorts of this giant army going towards the crab people and they of course like a big giant crab and all sorts of stuff and so they're all fighting along and stuff and then all of a sudden um the ground starts crack breaking open and out comes this giant thing that looks like what would be a kraken and stuff and on top of it is aquaman and he's controlling it with his powers and stuff and so he starts using it to fight along and everything and um eventually they're just all fighting and um that eventually leads them up to the water or to surface because Mur is like, you know, you fought him in his uh, domain. Yeah, domain now last time. Now yours. fight, take him into yours. And so they go where I assume it's like a ship or something has been it looks capsized like an Atlantean ship that... turned upside down because it's got the like uh, rudders or or whatever the. I would assume it was one that uh, that big kraken. I assume that was Korath. And Korath was kind of wrecking. Well, that's ships what I was wondering because it looked like a crab, so I like crab legs, but then it also had tendril or tentacles out the back of it. Um, but since it didn't talk, I wasn't sure since the other one talked and stuff. Um, but so yeah, there's a ship upside down again with the like big giant like rudder blade stuff still spinning and stuff. And so set for a very cool like fight scene arena and stuff it reminded me of like injustice where you'd have you know and it kind of the way it set up with the views it looked like you know like a mortal Kombat game and stuff where like injustice like i said but with that in the background it looked cool but then we get the fight between aquaman and ocean master and they just clash and collide and fight back and forth until eventually aquaman is able to break the um trident that orm was using and so then i guess that declares him the king and stuff and aquaman was getting ready to stab him but stopped and then um their mom ended up showing up and she you know 
said stuff. I forget what she said, but said stuff. Or or to told Orm. Aquaman to kill him because that was the way of their people. Yeah. And Aquaman looked at him and said, "Well, if you can't tell, I'm not of your people." Yeah, because of course he they call him like half breed or whatever and stuff. Because he's half human and half. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, she shows up and it ends the fight and stuff. And he kind of, Orm kind of gives up and stuff then. And um, they take him into custody and stuff to, I guess, lock him up or whatever. And we now have the true king of Atlantis of Aquaman. And I would have to say that's pretty much it for the movie. At the very end, we do see um, the mom go back and visits the daddy, or at least lives, goes back to live with him, I don't know, but she goes back and visits Aquaman dad, Aquaman's dad because she said when she left that um, whenever she can come back, she will um, at dawn or whatever, and so every morning he's been going out to the end of the dock and waiting for her, but she now hasn't shown up, but now he goes out and she's there waiting for him, and so they live happily ever after, and then of course we have Aquaman back as King of Atlantis and everything, and that's pretty much it for the actual movie. Did you have anything you want to add? No. That's... Um, and so then we, of course, there is one uh, in credit scene, or it's a mid-credit, so you get you know, some, like, uh, all the, like, stars credited and stuff, and then before it gets the all black screen with the names, there's a scene where you see a man, a black manta on a, like, a board or something just floating around in the ocean, and he gets picked up by a boat, and then he ends up waking up, and he's, um, in a room or whatever with this doctor that's been on TV, because when it shows the TV, it's like a news channel and stuff, and he's been on there saying, you know, that these Atlantean people are bad, they're going to be coming for us, they've already started this stuff, they're going to attack us and everything. He's like this worrying person and stuff about this whole thing. And so he's got a Black Manta, and he's messing with the Black Manta gear and stuff, and they're pretty much teaming up together, I guess. And um, I did see a Rita thing that that guy, I don't can't remember his name, but he is a character from the Aquaman comics, and by the th article I read, it did say that he was a like a friend of Aquaman and stuff. But after um, he didn't like Aquaman's belief and stuff with the whole Atlantis, uh, the, the like powers and stuff, in Atlantis and stuff. So he starts to um, kind of uh, I forget what the word is. But he like starts to hate Aquaman and turns against him and becomes like a bad guy. Resent. And, yeah, resent, um, and he starts to resent him and turns bad and fights against Aquaman. So it did kind of fit it. You don't get that friendly part, but he does, obviously, he's against Aquaman and the Atlanteans and everything. And so that was pretty much it for the movie. I don't know what else to add in. Like I said, oh, well, we'll talk about stuff. Um, for acting and stuff, I mean, pretty much the same. I mean, I think Jace Momo is good. Aquaman, probably as good as you could get. I didn't have any issues with any of the characters. I think visual quality-wise, it looked pretty good. Like, obviously, you can tell a lot of it's CG because, you know, there's big giant creatures and monsters and everything. So you're going to have uh, weird CG and stuff. But it didn't look cra too crazy since a lot of it was CG. You know, it didn't look really out of place. The only time it really bothered me, but it probably was supposed to, is during the fight when Aquaman was doing the spin the trident thing and his, oh, it yeah. was like spinning where his hands weren't and stuff. It just looked weird. Because I feel when uh, the one guy... Willem Dafoe, yeah, Volko. Volko. When he was doing it, it looked pretty, like, it was obviously going faster and you can spin it, but you could see, like, his hands there, like, it was actually spinning it. But with Aquaman, it was like it was spinning around his body and stuff, so it would, like, move it and stuff. It just looked weird. But, yeah, so visual, it's obviously a lot of CG and everything, but it still looks pretty good and decent. Um, it Like, when it is showing stuff, it doesn't look weird or out of place. Like, it feels like if when CG comes in for, like, creatures and stuff, it feels like everything CG, so it all fits perfectly together to me. Um, so that wasn't, because I was kind of worried some of that would look weird and cheesy and stuff, but I think it actually looked pretty good overall. Um, like, I enjoyed some of the music that was played through it. But yeah, so overall, I just have to say, it was, like I said, a pretty good movie overall. Again, not the um, most, like, the best movie ever, but it was still really good. I'd Again, um, I guess we'll go ahead and just give it a rating. Again, my scale is 1 to 10 with 5 being directly in the middle of the just most average movie. I would have to probably say it's about a 6 or so, because then I'm mostly judging that um, with, since last week we did uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, and I gave that like a 7.5 to 8. Um, I definitely like that more than Aquaman, but I don't feel it deserves a 7, so maybe a 6 or 6.5 for Aquaman, where again, it's above average movie. 
Um, but I'm pretty sure this is a movie that I'm going to want to watch all the time and stuff, or watch again multiple times, which is how usually I judge movies. If I enjoy them or not, is if I want to watch them multiple times, then I know it's a good movie. So I'll definitely see it, you know, again when it comes out on DVD or whatever and stuff. But beyond that, maybe just when it's on TV every now and then and stuff. What would you give it for a rating? I'm going to give it a solid nine and a half. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. You rate everything so high. Well, when it comes to superhero stuff, I'm very particular, and this one was really close to the material, and it was really well done. Yeah. Um, so, there's our rating. So, again, we are uh, giving it higher ratings and everything. So, be sure to let us know what your opinion is on the, um, the, in the comments. Let me know if you enjoyed it, if you hated it, whatever your opinions are, let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, leave us a thumbs up. And don't forget, we will be uh, tomorrow, so the day this video comes out, depends on when you watch it, we will be doing Bumblebee. So, if you want to know our opinions on Bumblebee, come back the next day and um, we'll be putting up a video on Bumblebee. And, um, so far, it's supposedly doing good, so we'll have to see how what our opinions are of it. But um, thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to see more movie reviews. And we'll see you next time.